Hello and very warm welcome to Thoro newspaper analysis for 11th of April which was brought to you by Law Seco. Now with this let's start with the TNF for today. As far as the agenda for today is concerned, we're going to have a look at some of the important national and international news updates which are relevant for your exams. This is going to be followed by two legal updates for today and at the very end we have two editorials to discuss the title of first which is Ministry of Truth. Essentially in this particular editorial the point of discussion is uh, the recently notified IT rules of 2023 and this is going to be followed by another editorial discussion the title of which is an improper forum. The point of discussion of this particular editorial is uh, the establishment of GST tribunals. The author who is a senior advocate he has pointed out some of uh, the deficiencies in the legal framework for such establishment. We are going to have a look at the pointers which are 5 or 6 in number. With this, let's start with the TNF for today. So the first update is with respect to the President of India taking a sortie in an Indian Air Force fighter, jet or aircraft. So the President and the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Draupadi Murmur, she took a sortie in an Indian Air Force fighter aircraft at the Tejpur Air Force Station in Assam. She is the third president and also the second woman president to undertake such sortie. And while she was doing so, the she was briefed about uh, the operational capabilities of the aircraft and of the Indian Air Force in general. And she expressed her satisfaction with the operational preparedness of the Indian Air Force. Moving on to the next update, this is with respect to the establishment of facility for detection of gravitational wave in the state of Maharashtra. So the union cabinet has approved a project to build an advanced gravitational wave detector in the state of Maharashtra and this is uh, at an estimated cost of rupees 2600 crore. The facility's construction it is expected to be completed by the end of this decade. Moving on to the next update this is with respect to the uh, street child cricket world cup which is scheduled to be held in September in India. So India is all set to host the second edition of the state child cricket world cup for this year organized by street child united and save the children India the street child cricket world cup 2023 it will become or it will welcome uh, 22 teams in total from 16 countries as far as the first edition of this particular championship is concerned it took place in uh, the in in the year 2019 in london where team india emerged victorious moving on to the next update this is with respect to ins vikrant receiving original bell as gift India's first indigenous aircraft carrier, which is INS Vikrant, it has finally gotten its original bell installed on it again, which was installed for the first carrier of the same name, commissioned in the year 1961. The first made in India aircraft carrier named after INS Vikrant, it was commissioned by the Prime Minister of India last year in September. Moving on to the next update. This is with respect to uh, the Ladakh wood carvings receiving the GI tag. So a geographical indication tag, it has been granted for Ladakh wood carvings, which is famed for its complex designs and distinctive patterns, which are mostly inspired by Buddhist themes and motifs. GI tag essentially is a type of intellectual property right that identifies a product as originating from a specific geographical location and it possesses certain qualities, characteristics or reputations that are due to that location itself. Now moving on to the next update. So recently Bharat Biotech it has won award at World Vaccine Congress. Bharat Biotech it was awarded as the best production or process development award as a part of the Vaccine Industry Excellence Award. This particular award ceremony was held in Washington, USA. Now with this we've come to the international segment for today. This is with respect to Bangladesh, Japan and India holding connectivity meet in Tripura. Asian Confluence, a think tank which is based out of Northeast India. It is in collaboration with India's foreign ministry organizing this particular event. It is going to be attended by Deputy Foreign Minister of Bangladesh and India along with the Chief Minister of Tripura and the Japanese envoy to India. And now this uh, has brought us to the legal segment for today. The first update is coming from the Honorable Apex Court of India. The case of which is, the name of this particular case is CBI versus Vikas Mishra. So the Supreme Court has opined that the findings in the case of CBI versus Anupam, Anupam J. Kulkarni, wherein it was held 
that police custody could not extend after 15 days from the date of arrest, it should be reconsidered as there is a chance this could frustrate the judicial process. Now, the second update is coming from the High Court of Jam uh, Jammu and Kashmir and uh, Ladakh. So, the Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh High Court, it recently ruled that the conviction and sentencing of a convict by the trial court under the provisions of plea bargaining under a Chapter 22 of the Jammu and Kashmir CRPC, it does not affect character antecedents of an individual. Therefore, it does not disable him from, spe uh, from seeking public appointment. The name of this particular uh, case is Amjad Hussain Khan versus uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And now we've reached the editorial segment for today. So first of all, we're going to take up the second editorial, which is an improper forum for our discussion. So see, as far as uh, the structure of this particular editorial discussion is concerned, so first of course, we're going to understand ki what is the issue of this particular article. And then we're going to understand as to what are the provisions for creation of new GST tribunals. And then we will read some pointers padenge as to what are the deficiencies in this new particular proposed structure as per the author of this particular article. So now let's understand what is the issue at the core of this article. It is the constitution of GST tribunals because it goes against several rulings of the Supreme Court. See, as far as the, uh, the factual background of this entire article or this pure mudde ki agar uski hum baat kare, so see, essentially, jab se Central Goods and Service Tax Act, the GST Act of 2017, it was introduced and it was eventually passed. It also created a GST tribunal. However, it is unfortunate that the composition and the structure of this tribunal, it they were contrary to the settled principle of law, which was laid by the several Supreme Court decisions. And as a result, eventually, in 2019, Madras High Court held these tribunals or the provisions providing for this to be unconstitutional and the name of this particular case was revenue bar association versus union of india and this development happened in the year 2019 now after that union as a result the decision of the high court became the final authority here and then 2019 up 2023 we did not have any gst tribunal and uh, this is a long period of five years now we need to understand here the tribunals ki utility kya hai? what is uh, the benefit of having a tribunal in place see our courts as we all would uh, vouch for this fact that uh, they are overburdened with work there is a lot of pendency and delay in delivery of justice and speedy justice which is also one of uh, the aspects of article 21 which is a fundamental right in in our constitution but tribunals ki creation is liye kari gayi thi taki court se kuch load jo hai wo kam ho and a specific subject matter but there is a specific body which is there to address the grievance of the aggrieved person and give him justice however because uh, ye pura debacle hua to thereafter there was no tribunal in place for five years now recently in the budget session certain amendments were introduced in the finance bill of 2023 and these amendments were to provide for a new GST tribunal establishment regime. However, what was the last day the session ka, us din par ye amendments were produced and because uh, the session was disrupted and the entire chaos that was going on in the parliament, there was no discussion and it was eventually passed. Now the author says uh, that the new provisions also, they are contrary to the law which is laid down by the Supreme Court in several of its decisions and the author has cited three of them which is uh, Sampath Kumar which is 1987 decision and this is followed by L Chandra Kumar which is 1997 decision and then we have Madras Bar Association 2010, 2014, 2015, 2020 and 2021 decision. Now uh, the author has stated that uh, uh, it is regrettable that the laws continue to be drafted and enacted in deliberate con uh, intervention of the uh, Honorable Apex Court judgments. Now let's understand as to what are the lacunas that are pointed out by the author. So the first is with respect to the disqualification of a lawyer from being appointed a member of the tribunal. And the second is with respect to the selection committee giving uh, two names or suggesting two names to the central government for appointment as a member of the tribunal and the central government has the authority to decide among those two names who is going to be the member eventually. And the third point is with respect to the tenure of such members not being minimum five years which is mandated by one of the decisions of the Honorable Apex Court itself 
and the fourth issue is with respect to the decrease in allowances of such members and fourthly the author talks about uh, the composition uh, of this particular tribunal because it has uh, technical members uh, two technical members one representing the center and one is coming from the state so the author has uh, cited uh, some issue with respect to the same so now let's dive into this particular article now as far as the first issue is concerned with respect to disqualification of lawyers it is stated that the new gst regime it disqualifies lawyers from being appointed as a member of this particular uh, tribunal and the author says uh, that uh, the new GST tribunal disqualifies lawyers from being judicial members when such exclusion was even recently held to be impermissible in the context of the consumer forum every other tribunal permits advocates to become judicial members and there is no reason to exclude them from this particular important all India tribunal and also, it has been stated that since uh, the tribunal uh, proposes the selection of district judges as judicial members, so the author says that lawyers, district judges, they do not have expertise of dealing with tax related matters at a large and the lawyers who have been dealing with this particular area, they have better understanding of the law concerned and therefore they are most more suitable for being appointment and therefore they should not have been disqualified now let's come to the point of a selection commission suggesting two names and the central government choosing the final uh, final candidatureship so with respect to that it is stated that the selection come uh, the search come selection committee it has to recommend two names for each post and the central government will choose one of them a similar provision in the tribunal reforms rationalization and conditions of service ordinance of 2021 it was struck down by the honorable a fitz court itself so the author says that when the search committee is headed by a supreme court judge itself and also senior secretaries are on the committee then why should not the selection by the committee be binding on the central government itself uh, from 1985, the Supreme Court has held that the tribunals mem tribunal members, they should have a minimum tenure of five years with an automatic renewal for another term unless there is compelling reason to discontinue their service. Abhi hua kya jo recent regime proposed kari gai hai, usme despite this salutary rule, the 2017 amendment introduced a long term. Uh, this 2017 which amendment thi, usne introduced kiya a term of three years and when this again was held illegal now the term was increased to four years with an option for renewal for another two years so this essentially means that supreme court ko demanded tha that it has to be minimum five years when it comes to tenure of a tribunal mem member that has been overlooked and then this has brought us to the problems with the allowances so the provisions of housing uh, the provision for housing it was uh, resolved by the honorable apex court uh, fixing a house rent allowance of rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand for the president and rupees 1 lakh 25 thousand for the members now this is again reduced to the house rent allowance of central government employees carrying on the same pay which is woefully inadequate in major cities so essentially it is said that now the house allowances has been reduced to any other central employee that works with the central government and this is not adequate now thirdly it has been uh, disc there is uh, this discussion of issue with composition see the gst tribunal agar hum uski composition ki baat kare to there is going to be one principal bench at delhi which consists of a president a judicial member and a technical member at uh, of center and a technical member of state so there are four member uh, four uh, persons involved in this tribunal at total Similarly, state benches will also have four member, tri member tribunals consisting of two judicial members and two technical members. Now, the author has stated that there is no logic in having one technical member for the state and another technical member for the center because the entire center or state ka GST regime hai, it is similar, it is identical. So, therefore, it would have been far better if each bench had two members, one judicial and one technical because isse kya hoga ki, uh, there is going to be need for appointment of a lot of members uh, for uh, all the tribunals across the states and also for the center. And this has taken us now to another uh, po pointer that has been stated in the, uh, the article itself, which is that the formation of the GST tribunal, it should have been done by a proper bill and it should have been referred to a parliamentary committee. The present provisions are liable to be challenged, triggering a fresh round of litigation and the center is unlikely to see a functioning 
and the country rather is unlikely to see a functioning GST tribunal for several months to come. Now with this let's proceed with the first editorial which was Ministry of Truth. Here the title of this particular editorial is again Ministry of Truth and uh, the point of discussion is the IT rule of 20. 30. So see, uh, as far as we've also discussed it uh, in one of our previous TNS as well, hua kya tha ki 6th April ko, the Ministry of Electronics and IT, unhone ek, uh, it, cre it issued, uh, it notified the IT rules, which is which essentially is uh, the Information Technology Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Amendment Rules of 2023. And in particular notification, ne, uh, 2021 ke IT rules hai, the parent legislation of which is the IT Act of 2000 usme kuch amendments propose kare and we had also read uh, the press release by the concerned ministry jisme unhone broadly two aims and objectives ko specify kiya tha the first of which is to regulate the entire online gaming industry because uh, government could see that there is a lot of potential in India being one of the youngest nations of the world and the youth being attracted in this particular segment and there is a growing demand for it as well so a legal framework was needed for that so that being one of the objectives and the second objective that we had also seen was to provide for a fact check unit of the central government and kis purpose ke liye? to identify fake or false or misleading information and this is in respect of the business or any business of the central government. So this was the whole purpose of it. Now, before we proceed with the, what are the problems with the IT rules which are cited in this article, let's just have an understanding of how, what events transpired and these amendment rules how they proposed were and in respect of what objections were at the very initial stage itself. So what happened essentially? IT rules 2023 it was iska draft it was released for public consultation in Jan uh, on 2nd Jan itself of this particular year so is saal ke shuruat hote hi IT rules 2021 ko initially public discussion ya domain mein dal diya gaya tha for their consultation us dauran mein sirf ek hi facet iska uh, was in existence which is the regulation for online gaming industry but uska jo second facet tha which is providing for a fact check unit wo nahi tha tab tak in existence fir then jab almost deadline khatam hone wali thi uske baad mein government ne introduce kiya ye second leg of this particular amendment uh, provisions and then consultation jo uski deadline thi it was extended now when this particular move was uh, it it came to the public light there was a lot of opposition of it by the media fraternity and others as well now, in this respect, the Minister of State for the Concerned Ministry, who is Rajiv Chandrasekhar, he said that we are not this is not going to be misused by the government and we are going to have a discussion on the PIB fact checks uh, sometime soon. And uh, he said this early next month. However, there was no such meeting or consultation and therefore there was a lot of opposition with respect to the fact that this particular amendment was brought about without any sort of consultation by the government and there should have been one. Now let's understand what are the problems. See, the first problem pointed out in the article is that this particular amendment, it does not define what fake or false or misleading information is. Neither does it provide hearing processes of the fact checking unit. Nahi to hame ye pata hai ki hum what is going to be essentially a fake or false or misleading information. Or nahi hame pata hai ki agar kisi ko grievance redressal karna hai otherwise also to what is the hearing process of the, or for this particular unit and secondly author ne is particular jo leg hai which is a creation of fact check unit isko compare kiya hai with the, the regulation and provisions provided for the on regulation of gaming industry to uske liye he has said that uh, the self regulatory bodies of gaming organizations are there and they have elaborate guidelines as well with respect to appointments and also otherwise with respect to other facets as well but this is absent when it comes to the uh, the leg of uh, regulation on fake false or misleading information also uh, here we need to understand that uh, previous it rules amendments for the ott platforms which were brought about they were also put on hold by three high courts wherein one said that it would starve the normal mass of the liberty of thought and uh, as far as uh, uh, the the power of the ministry concerned for uh, bringing about such laws is concerned it has subordinate rule making power under section 73 of the it rules now with this we've come to the end for today's tna if you want to get access to free study material which is being provided by law seeker 
or you went, uh, want to get access to the TNA slides, I would highly encourage all of you to join our Telegram channel using the link in the description of this particular video, or you may simply scan the barcode here. These are the point of contacts in case you want to get in touch with LawSeeker for any purpose. And also uh, the quiz for yesterday's TNA, it is made available for all of you to attend. And again, we would highly encourage all of you to do so in the uh, link uh, in the description of this particular video itself. Now it's time for us to, uh, to actually congratulate uh, students, our students who are putting in day and night into their preparation and two of the students who have put down the correct answer in the comment section, they are uh, Pallavi Mishra and Mahim. Congratulations to the both of you. And the question for today, the answer of which I would like all of you to put in the comment section is, which article of the Indian Constitution provides for the fact or the provision that the President of India is the supreme commander as far as the defense forces of the country is concerned? Please let us know in the comment section. And thank you for being with us.